brought you here today to my unfinished nuclear power plant. And in the nuclear power plant, we have the nuclear super smelter. I'm going to I'm going to show you how this bad boy works now. Just give a quick little showcase before I show you how to build it because you're probably going to want to know how it works before you build it, right? So, right now, you can see the low fuel warning light is on, which means you probably only got like one good smelt left in it. So, let's go ahead and take some of this kelp here. You will need a lot of fuel for this bad boy, by the way. So, recommended get yourself one of them kelp farms. But, come on over. Plop some of these in here. They start going up into the fuel tank. Soon, the fuel light will turn off. Just as I'm saying that, look at that. So, down here we have our two inputs. I happen to have cactus farm right here. So, <laughs> we'll take some of cactus. Uh, yeah, that'll do. And so, the idea here is we evenly space our input items into these uh, chests. Hey, you could go a full box on either, or you could do, like, say, stack any, half a stack of each, really. It's pretty versatile. Just try to keep them even so that uh, the fuel goes evenly. And once we do that, we press the launch button. Now the smelting light has come on to signify that it is smelting items. And right now the light is on, so we are in shower mode. And any second now, right now, we will get the items that we smelted, our big green dyes, they come. One perfect stack dropped right on our head. Here comes another one. And if we don't want to stand here forever, say we come up and drop a bunch of uh, bunch of uh, stone in here, like two shulkers full, and we just want to come back later, flip this switch. Now it's off, it's in chest mode. So, items will now start going into the chests, like so, and we can come back later. But let's head on over to the side now. This area is not finished, but it's really satisfying. You can see all of the stuff just flying through and into the water stream. Ah, yeah, that's the stuff. All right, now that we've seen it in action, let's learn how to build it. We're going to need to start with a button. Don't worry about that. <laughs> From our button, we're going to come out two blocks. One over like that. One over like that. And we'll put blocks of iron. They don't got to be iron. These are just where our rails are going to be. These are where our two which columns. This is where our two input minecarts are going to be. And out of these powered rails, we're going to come out two more blocks, and we're going to put detector rails and regular rails. If we're looking from the front, off the left side, we're going to build a little shape like this on both sides. We're going to put some comparators getting readings out of these, and we'll put some repeaters going into those blocks. Now underneath, we're going to put down some blocks like that. These are going to power powered rails to actually launch. So the idea here is when the minecart comes back and has items in it, the comparator is going to relaunch the minecart. And we can pretty much just connect these up like this now under the button. So, yep, that's going to work. Okay, from here, we're going to go, this is the right side. At the end of this, we're going to go one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get rid of all of these seven because the eighth block is what we're gonna keep. And here we're gonna go out 16. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And from there, we're going to make four more columns like this. Let's grab some droppers, some hoppers, and some furnaces. Not durnaces, furnaces. There we go. The outside droppers are going to be facing the outside. And the inside droppers are going to be facing inside. So there's like one, two, three water streams. We just put in our droppers like this with hoppers on top of them, furnaces on top. And if you're looking from the button, it's the left side of the furnace should get a hopper into the side of it and on top. Just like this. And then we continue we don't continue we make four of these with the droppers facing where i told you to but the hoppers stay the same i'll be back when that's done all right we got that bad boy built and now we're just gonna put in these are on the back of the droppers because there's sides you know, front is here front is here so on these columns with the backs we're gonna come in like that this last block, this is at the back, so the button's on that side. We will put a redstone torch on this side and the top of this block. Cover that up. And we're going to need to put all of this redstone in like a show. And this is going to power all of the droppers. Do it on this side too. We could put the dust in as we go. That makes it a little bit easier. Then just on this last bit here, this is just because it's 16 blocks wide and the redstone only powers for 15, so we need those. These will eventually get powered, so we'll put some repeaters down like that. But for now, we should be able to take this up. And then there should be two blocks there like that. We'll just fill all that in with powered rails. And again, over here for the second output. Sorry, there's an input. The second input. On these ones that aren't lined up with an input, we're going to come out one block and then up one like that. These are just stoppers for the rails. So on this back side, between the top ones, we're going to come out three blocks to make a U shape like that on these two. And then you can kind of see the path that's going to happen. They're going to come up, go around, and then boom, they'll come back. We just fill these all in with powered rails now. All right, not the iron blocks, just on top of the hoppers. This side, yes, iron blocks. This side, we need regular rails for that. Plopping in the regular rails for the turns here. That'll do. As we go down here, we'll go one block below where the hoppers actually are. I believe it comes out two like that. So it just comes down, around, and back. And then you have to do it on this side here as well. Just like that. We 
you might have to break it like that. That's okay. You just want to make sure that you get your U-shape rails. And we can put all of these in now. Oops. Yeah, I'm forgetting a row of hoppers on the front here. That's why I was getting confused. Okay, well, we've got our hoppers in. And again, we're going to come out one block and up. Fill this in with powered rails, but make sure they're straight. Want them the way we want them to go. Down here, we're going to make one more of these U's with the regular. There we go. So now we can follow from here. Going to go woo, around, woo, around, around. Stop and come back. This bottom one is the fuel, is the fuel line, and the top one is the smeltable items. Now we need to get some levers and some regular blocks. We're going to eyeball the middle, but because it's even, we're going to try and get one on that side. So I'll plop it here, put a lever on top, and everything is powered here, and it goes one over here. So it looks like I got the right spot. We'll just put four more. Well, three more. He's in total of four, just like that. So all of our rails here are powered. These aren't yet, but don't worry, they will be soon. And now, before we get too crazy, I'm just gonna outline the water streams here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we'll come down one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that will bring us right to the end. We'll also grab some glass for viewing. For now, we're just going to block off anywhere where the water could be, but we'll eventually build in the rest of this. And we'll do this in all of the water streams. And actually in here, we are going to put the water in already because there's something else we have to do in here. And these droppers have the tendency to shoot items up and they can get stuck on top of these droppers. So we're just going to block that in with glass here so that the items cannot get on top of the droppers. And we could put this water stream in. One more on this side. All right, and our first little sets of water streams are in, so our items are all just flowing out to the end here. Well, we'll do the rest of the water streams later, but I felt this part was good to get out of the way right now. Now we're going to build the auto fueling circuit. So I'm going to use orange concrete for this one, just to separate it from the rest so you know. Um, which circuits are which. You're going to need detector rails, regular rails, and powered rails, a sticky piston with an oak fence. Doesn't have to be oak. I'll put my rails down first. From here, we're going to come out, what, three? One, two, three, four blocks, and then up one. Put two powered rails like this, a detector rail like that, with a regular rail, and then one more powered. Okay, now we're going to put a redstone block with a dust on it like that. Now we're going to put a block like that and another one up like that. A comparator looking on this de detector rail going into that block. A torch on top with two blocks like this and some dust on top on the side of that block, on the side of that redstone going to put a sticky piston like this and this is where we're going to grab our fence to just go right underneath that and that will stop a hopper minecart from coming through we can now break that block and put another one there on top of that block we're going to put a double chest going like this a hopper and a hopper minecart. So this hopper is going to face down onto the blocks like that, and this hopper minecart is going to get pushed right in and it'll stop. 
Now out the back of this chest, we're gonna put some blocks like this. We're gonna grab ourselves a barrel, put a comparator like that and a comparator like that on subtract mode. This one's on subtract. Put a barrel here so that it's getting a reading out of this barrel. And we'll just put a stack in for now, but the amount of items you put into this barrel will overall determine the lowest amount of fuel in this box before the low fuel light turns on. So we'll put in the low fuel light circuit now by putting some blocks like this, a redstone dust underneath, a torch coming off of it like that, and just underneath, we'll go one, two, three over like that into another block. And right underneath here, we're going to put a repeater like that, a block, and then a redstone lamp. So we'll put two next to each other like this, because there will be another one here, but we'll grab a sign. This one is the low fuel light. And this one is going to be the smelting light. Right now, you can see the fuel is low. And if we grab ourselves some kelp, this might launch right away. It does. Okay, yeah, we need the other circuit in first, but we'll just test this out. And this is good because we will need to manually fuel it once. There's now two kelp in each of the furnaces, what we like to see, and the kelp will return. Right now we're going to move on to the next circuit, which is going to be the smelting light. But what it's really, what, what this circuit really is, is it counts how many times the furnaces turn on or off, or how long it's been on, so it will automatically refuel as it needs. And for this one, we're going to grab some magenta concrete. Why not? So we're going to start with the first furnace in the line, and we're going to have an observer looking into it, then a sticky piston coming this way with a redstone block on top. Down here, we're going to put blocks like this. We're going to have a torch on this side of the block, we're going to have a repeater coming in, and then we're also going to have a separate line coming out like this. We'll just bring this all the way over. We'll put our block on the back, a repeater like that. Sorry, not a repeater. This repeater goes here. Okay, this repeater goes here, dust behind it, then a block goes here that gets powered by another repeater. And this comes all the way back to here. There we go. So this will now, when this redstone block is here, will turn on the smelting light. There we go. Now down here, we're going to make a redstone clock. So we'll just come out with our blocks. How many does this go out? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we're going to need a block here to stop these powers from mingling. <laughs> Let's see, so I think this is how you make them. One, two. So the other sticky piston goes here. We'll just fill this all in. One, two, three behind that sticky piston, right? Oh, two, my mistake. All right, now we'll put our redstone block in there. Grab these hoppers out, hoppers facing into each other. We need comparators coming out of those hoppers with a repeater and then connect that dust up. And then we put five stacks of items in the droppers. From here, we're going to put a observer looking at that redstone block, come over three blocks just like this. 
Then we'll have a dropper facing down and a dropper facing up like this. So they're shooting into each other. And we will put four items in the top dropper. Now we'll put a block here like this and around. So we get our comparator out of this into the block, into a repeater, into another block like this, but we'll come down and this should now be powered. We'll have an observer looking at that dust and two blocks out the back with a repeater on four ticks, a dust, an observer looking at that dust, and then a block. So now this is going to shoot the items back up after this thing counts that it's moved four times. Okay, so now here we want this to block off this so it doesn't automatically uh, go just when the, what do you call it? I'm going to use green concrete. We want to lock this so that it doesn't go just when the minecart is full, but when this circuit tells it to refuel. That's a good way to say it. So we'll make a big tower like this coming down with just a block in between. I believe it's three down like this. Now we'll come over from here. We need a torch on the side of that. And then we come over with a gap like this. Over into this corner like that. Just put a repeater at the end to power the block and connect this up with dust. And same thing over here. We'll bring this over into that block. Just connect it up with the dust. From here, we'll go a torch tower up like that. There we go. So now, when we get the kelp back out, and we fill this up, it doesn't just automatically go because this thing's telling it that it can't fuel yet. It shouldn't fuel yet. It doesn't need to. So now we can start filling this up. And when this changes, it's no longer low fuel, which should be about four stacks. That's one, two, three, and four. Yep, there we go. So it's about four stacks in this chest which is 10 stacks beneath. So about 14 stacks of kelp or fuel is where it's going to uh, turn that light off. But it does use a lot of fuel. So it's recommended to have that kelp farm I was talking about earlier in the video. Oh, also these are now turned on because of um, these torches here. So let's just get underneath, power it like that. Or we can do this block a bit better. There we go. Now these are just always powered. Before I forget, let's do the circuit out the back that will um, empty the droppers when they fill up with items. So we'll connect these up like that. Out the back of this dropper here. We're going to come out one, two, three, four blocks, and then one, two, three this way. We'll have a comparator coming out of this repeater, two dusts, just a little pulse extender here with four comparators. We're going to want to cover that up. Oh, I should have been using a concrete for this. Oh, well. It is what it is now. <laughs> and down here, we're just going to put a basic little clock, a comparator on a subtract mode, three dust like this, a repeater coming back for one tick, and just connecting this all up now. So if we put items in here, it'll just start shooting them out. I burnt out the torches, but um, it, it doesn't need to shoot that many in the uh, real application. There will only be one coming in at a time. 
is just to shoot off a couple just to make sure it shoots out all of the items. You'll, you'll see when it's actually going. But I suppose now that we're here, we can cap off the top of this because we saw some items spilling over the top. We can cap this up and we'll do the same on this side. All right, now all that's left to do is the fuel input, the chest output, and all of the water streams that come with that. <laughs> and I think I'm going to do the fuel input first. Okay, now we're ready for the fuel input. We're going to come right off the bottom of the low fuel light here and put double chest like that. We need these stairs underneath just to make sure you can open chest. And at the back here, we're going to come down two blocks like this and just connect a bunch of hoppers in like that to the dropper. So there's two, uh, there's two lines of hoppers coming into this chest, so it's just faster. Underneath, we're going to put a block like that and another dropper. Then we need some observers. We need an observer looking into that dropper, powering a block, another dropper, and then another observer, but looking this way this time. And from here, you'll be able to just power this because this is a clock. So once you turn it on and then back off, it'll start clicky clicky. Now that I've awoken this horrible sound, we should get rid of it <laughs> by putting some blocks in like this. We need a comparator looking into that box to power this. So if there's items in here, we'll get this repeater coming out. We'll put it on four ticks just to give items time to get through. From that block, we'll come down like this with a dust torch on the side and then we'll just that's not going to work this way <laughs> there we go so now it's not going until there's items in here then I start shooting them out nothing left in there that's good that's what we like to see all right so across from here we just put our ice with a pressure plate there and some soul sand like that. Then we can build up with the red concrete and completely enclose this so that no items are getting out. We'll bring this up to the same level that the chest is on. We'll grab some more hoppers and have them going into the fuel chest. From here, we can just make this entire thing out of glass. Come over, oops, like that. Bring up the rest of these. This is technically a different, this is technically a different circuit, but I'm gonna make that red just for aesthetic reasons here. And at the top, we'll make the rest of this all out of glass, just so you can see everything moving. Oops. Once everything is all blocked in and no water's going to get out, we can put our water bucket down right at the top here. And right on this block, more packed ice, another pressure plate, and some more water. Now we know all of our items are going to be going into that chest. And we can fill this up with kelp so that we get our bubble column. If we take a stack out of that, our low fuel light turns on. We put a stack in here and it'll just start shoop, firing them all up. Soon enough, that fuel light will turn off. Oh, 
There's the last little bit. And it's probably all coming through the poppers, right? Oh, there it goes. I wasn't even looking at it when it went off. That's tragic. Oh, well, there's just one last thing we need to do, and that is the outputs, the chest output and the shower output. The shower is my favorite. So here, we do need an upper slab, but this is going to be where our floor is. We do need the slab here or a glass, any transparent block to let the redstone come down there. Upper slab is good. From this block, we need one, two, three, and that fourth block high is going to be a redstone lamp. Put a lever on it so we can turn it on and off. This part is really quite simple. So we'll just make a little staircase like this of three blocks. We'll put a torch on this side with two dusts right there. Then we'll come out across like this with another one. Or sorry, that's a repeater. And a block like this. Off the side of this, we put a sticky piston. And off the top of this, we put a regular piston. We can grab a sea lantern and some light blue glass now. Make this across like that. This is where our hoppers are going to be with our chests. And then we can also come around here. And right here. Going to be where our items spew out on the shower feature. So we'll pick a block. This one looks pretty good. It's not going to get in the way of any redstone here. We'll just start building it down. Now all we got to do is connect these water streams up. So we'll come down a block just like that so the water or the items fall into the water stream here. And we'll do the same sort of technique with the eight down, you know. Boom. This will come out eight, and this is where it goes down. So from here, we can probably just take this over, and it doesn't really go that. Hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> there we go. That should work, but it doesn't. Okay, we're moving this one block over now. <laughs> That's all we got to do. This is now the new block because this water is going to zigzag and this one is going to need to be ice, packed ice, with the pressure plates. And I just got rid of it. <laughs> Okay, this one here is going to be the packed ice. So now we can see the water bringing it around. And that should be soul sand right here. We'll now close these all in. Make sure we put a back on it. Connect these up. And let's just enclose this so no items get lost at all. We don't want any items getting lost. So now all we got to do is get our water and our kelp back. I'm going to block this off for now because I don't want the water to spill out. But we'll put a water in. Come on down here and kelp it back up. Get our bubble column again. Block the top of that off so nothing flies out the top. Put a block here temporarily to stop the water. And now we're ready for our chests. 
and hoppers. So our chests are going to go, oops, here. And we'll go one, two, three, four. Four is about good. Keeping in mind, this is the floor level, so we'll have one block there. We could go down five if we... Oh, no, we couldn't because that's there. So we'll just hook up all of these. Now we can break this block. And put a sign down. Meaning, light on is shower. Light off is chest. The last thing we need is some chest mine carts on the inputs. Input one, input two. And we can test this out now. We should also test this real quick, switching it over to item shower mode. Oh yeah, look at that, it doesn't quite read. Good thing we tried that out. There's an easy fix for that. At the very end, put another one here. And one last water bucket. There we go. So now, when we switch this, Items will come around and come out through the shower. Okay. Wonderful. We've got it. This is where the floor is going to be. Well, because I love redstone, we're going to smelt redstone blocks first. Let's do four stacks in each. A total of eight stacks of redstone. We're in shower mode and we'll push the button. So there goes our mine carts. They're going all the way around, fueling everything. This thing has flicked, showing our smelting light to turn on. And our counter has started going down. This has counted one use because it's turned on. We've already got a stack. <laughs> Wait for it to drop another perfect stack right on my head. And after that, we'll switch over to chest mode. Everything's going straight over to the chests. It takes a little while. For this small test, we could probably leave it all in shower mode. Ah, that is a problem. If you switch modes while the items are coming in, you can lose. So we lost eight right there. All right, there it is. Our eight stacks of redstone. You do need to check the upper boxes and sometimes these middle boxes, but usually only the top and bottom. When this goes out, this is going to count one more time. All of that crap is going to flow back up into there and the minecart is going to leave. Right? Okay, no. Oh, when this finishes. Well, we could speed that up. Boom. So there we go. Our auto fueler has left and is now fueling back up. And down here, our counter has reset itself to four. And. Okay, well, there goes our fuel minecart because this broke again. <laughs> That's something you're going to want to look out for, I suppose. <laughs> you don't want your fuel minecart to just flop it down into the void. But we could get that right back. And I guess that means that half of these <laughs> get fueled. Well, there you have it, the super smelter. 64 furnaces with a lot of features. Well, this has been the build tutorial and showcase of my 64 furnace smelter 
with many wonderful features. I mean, look at that. Low fuel light, smelting light, shower mode. Does your super smelter clean you? I thought not. The world download is available down there in the description. If you've had any trouble following the tutorial, or if you just want to check out the world for yourself before you build it. I hope you build one for yourself in your survival world because it's really nice to have when you just got to smell a lot of blocks. Glass is one of those. You know, glass is very pretty. Need a lot of it. Boom, super smelter. Get that nice and easy. If you liked the video, yeah, drop a like. If you want to see more of my videos as they come out, why not consider subscribing? It's free and, in theory, should help you find my videos as they come out. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm Bagwitty, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye! Uh, <laughs>